Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Autosport International for 2018 here at the National Exhibition Centre. One of the most exciting and innovative events in the history of this great racing car show. We're going to be launching the 2018 World Rally Championship right here live. Thanks for joining us on the live stream as well, if you are with us this morning. We are going to see the team principals and all the drivers and co-drivers from the four factory teams. Without further ado, let's start with M Sport Ford World Rally Team. Please welcome team principal Malcolm Wilson, world champion Sebastian Ogier and his co-driver Julien Angracia, and Rally GB winner Elfin Evans and his co-driver Dan Barrett. An M Sport Ford World Rally Team photo. Then we will reveal the Fiesta WRC with which the team will be defending its 2017 Drivers and Manufacturers World Championship. Gentlemen, do the honours. We'll meet each of the four teams individually and then we'll have a family shot at the end. Sebastian Ogier winning his fifth consecutive world championship, of course, in 2017. One of only a handful of drivers to win the title for two different manufacturers. Elvin Evans there taking that famous win at home in Wales in November. Okay, let's meet our next challengers with the fastest car in 2017, uh, looking to win their first title in 2018. It is the Hyundai World Rally Team. Please welcome team principal Michel Nondon, drivers Thierry Neuville and his co-driver Nicolas Gilsoul, Andreas Mickelson and Anders Jaeger, Danny Sordo and Carlos Del Barrio, and Hayden Pan and Seb Marshall. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's reveal the I-20 WRC. And there it is. Round of applause, everybody. Hyundai's World Championship contender for 2018. All four of Hyundai's drivers are World Championship Rally winners, of course. Must be one of the favourites for 2018. Let's meet their next challenger. Returning to the championship in 2017, Toyota Gazoo Racing, team principal and a four-time world champion, Tommy Mackinnon. And their drivers, Yari Matti Latvala and co-driver Mika Antilla. Esa Pekki Lappi, who famously won his home event in Finland in 2017, and co-driver Yanni Firm. And a man joining the team from M Sport for 2018, Ott Tanak and his co-driver Martin Jarveova. Welcome, gentlemen. Looks like we're going to have to move those cars slightly further apart. OK, guys, let's have a look at the Yaris WRC. Win a second time out, of course, in Sweden with Yari Matti last year and uh, young Esa Pakalapi taking victory in Finland. I'll be talking to the team principals and the drivers uh, over the course of the day. So if you are a WRC fan, then do stick around for that. Right, let's meet our fourth and final challenger from Citroen. Team principal Yves Maton. Drivers Chris Meek and co-driver Paul Nagel and fellow Irishman Craig Breen and co-driver Scott Martin. <laughs> I 
Okay, guys, let's have a look at the C3 WRC for 2018. Fantastic new machines introduced last year. Faster, louder, more exotic, bewinged creatures, harking back to the great days of rallying in the 1980s and 90s. There we have our four challengers. Round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll give our photographers and videographers time now to get the 2018 WRC family shot. Ladies and gentlemen, if, uh, could I ask you, if you have finished taking your pictures and making your little movies, uh, to move to one side, we are going to move the Fiesta back to its slot here on the other side of the stage. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the main stage here at Autosport International on the opening day for 2018. We continue our coverage of the World Rally Championship for 2018, our official live launch of the championship. We're going to be meeting uh, four gentlemen now very much uh, at the heart of the WRC to really set the scene for 2018. A little bit of reflection on what happened last year, but it's all guns blazing for WRC 2018. Please welcome on stage the promoter of the World Rally Championship, Oliver Ciesler. Uh, I have the boss of Wales Rally Great Britain, Ben Taylor, and I have Mark Rushbrook, who is the global Ford Performance Director of Motorsport. Gentlemen, welcome. Hello. Hello. Uh, fill in from the... Uh, wherever you want, they're all the same. We have a, we have a spare seat. We'll be have a, we have a fourth guest coming on in a moment, who is um, currently climbing off an aeroplane just around the corner. Um, Oliver, welcome. Happy New Year to you. Welcome to Autosport International. What an amazing coup uh, for us and for you to launch the championship here live today. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Happy New Year. Um, also for us, it's amazing. Thank you very much. We have to say for the invitation to having us. It's uh, the biggest auto show in, uh, before the season starts in one of what for the WRC is the biggest markets. There's barely another country where we have as many fans as uh, in England. So for us, it's just great to be here and to launch uh, our season. And anyhow, Autosports, autosports.com, uh, Motors TV are long-standing loyal partners of the championship. So thanks for the cooperation and the invitation. In the past, we've seen the launch in places like Casino Square in Monte Carlo. This is just as glamorous, I think, isn't it? It is uh, maybe even better, we have to see. Yeah. Still, we, we will go to Monte Carlo in two weeks yeah. and launch, the, from a sporting point of view, the, the season properly. 
But uh, what, what we see here is amazing and the interest of the people is great. So thanks to all of you for coming. Uh, just reflect on 2017 for us. Big change in the WRC with wider, faster, louder, naughtier cars. And it really sort of reinvigorated the series, didn't it? The, uh, the new cars that we introduced last year were right from the beginning a success and were very much appreciated by the fans. But uh, what followed then was unexpected. We had right in the first four rallies, four different winners and four different cars through the season, then seven different rally winners. And that was a dramatic situation that the championship has not seen in, I think, more than a decade. So the drama and the excitement was great. The championship was decided quite late at Rally GB, both the driver title and the manufacturer title, so that uh, mobilized the fans and it was a very, very good for the development of, of the WRC. In particular, let's not forget that we were losing with Volkswagen, um, a strong uh, manufacturer team, and we did not know how things developed last year. And uh, considering this um, throw, th throwing us back, we're losing a competitor, how the championship digested this um, uh, losing Volkswagen proved that it's at the moment quite strong and uh, on a very positive trend. I'll move up and down the line. I'll come back to you in a moment. Ben Wells Rally Great Britain, uh, one of the kind of iconic events in the championship. It was there right at the beginning uh, in 1973. How do you reflect on last year's event? I think the people that have been around this sport a lot longer than I have will tell you that it was a fantastic event by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, we had a a perfect weekend. We had fabulous weather uh, in October in Wales to m paint a beautiful postcard. We had great crowds. We had the denouement of a championship that had been exciting all year. As Oliver said, we, nobody knew all through the year who was going to win the rallies. And then to top it all, we had a, a home manufacturers championship win with M Sport. And then we had the, the home winner, first one since uh, Richard, um, and the first ever Welsh winner on the event. So I think it was an extraordinary event. It was a fantastic success and really, I think, shows that rallying is going in a really good direction at the moment. Does that have the marketeers and the PR people salivating in the background when you get a Welsh winner, the first, on home soil? Helps, doesn't it? I, 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 listen, Helps you sell your product a bit. Listen, everybody in this country wants to see uh, a British driver at the top of the World Championship, whether it's the World Formula One Championship or the World Rally Championship or, or any, other, any other sport. Home success and home talent is absolutely critical. So to see Elvin and Chris and Craig really at the sharp end of the sport is a fantastic opportunity for us to really push this sport back to where it belongs, where it, where it was previously. The event was rejuvenated by a move away from Cardiff, um, where it had been since 2000 or something like that. What was the problem? Why, why did the change work, do you think? Uh, I, I don't think it was so much a, a problem. I just think it, it had been there a long time. Everybody needs a bit of variety. It came up north, and uh, actually came up north five years ago now. So um, it, it, it's not like it's a new move. But what we found is uh, it's the biggest event that takes place in half of a country in the whole year. Uh, businesses, um, local community groups, the, the people, the fans, everyone's turned out and wants it to be there. They love it being there. It has a huge economic benefit on the region, a region that doesn't have a, a huge amount of commercial activity doing other things. So, you know, it, it's, it's given it a real platform to, um, to, to be a success and, and we'll, we'll build on that this year in 2018. Uh, this, is my, this is with my purist hat on. Can you move it to late November so it's even colder and filthy and snowy and miserable? Because that's how it should be. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always going to be the discussion about uh, the purist who wants it to be oh. the, <laughs> oh, okay. the last weekend of November and mud and snow and ice. But I have this discussion with Oliver. Uh, and the problem is that Rally GB was the only rally that was building a USP on cold, wet, miserable ice, fog. It's, it's great for the purist who wants to be out there with all the best clothing on. It's not so good for the new fan who wants to come and have an experience with their kids, with their family, or for the partners and the commercial people who want to come and bring, bring people on. So it's a balance. We've got to remain true to our heritage but we've also got to make sure we can attract new people. Um, Mark, welcome to the show. Uh, you're Global Director of Ford Performance Motorsport um, and really exciting news in 2018. Ford is back with a bang. Yeah, we're, 
We are really excited about what we've got going on in 2018. We've had a very long partnership with M Sport over 20 years now at varying levels through the years, but uh, we were here to help with the homologation of the car for 2017. A great partnership and very happy with what was accomplished. Um, but our technical support for 2018, we're going to increase in all areas, engine development, aerodynamics, some of the chassis work as well. So uh, definitely looking forward to keeping Malcolm and uh, the M Sport team at the front. People perhaps don't appreciate that you never really went away. You were in the background supplying technical support to M Sport, use of the, of the wind tunnel at Dunton, the supply of the chassis. Um, you're just ramping that up now, is that right? Right, absolutely. Uh, to, to be able to homologate a car in this series um, definitely involves, it requires support from the manufacturer. So we, we helped Malcolm and the team do that. Um, provided some technical support, but that's really for 2018. We just want to take it all to another level We've got global resources from the company that can really help keep this car uh, getting faster and faster every weekend Right, let's bring on our fourth guest. Uh, we have the uh, motorsport boss of Michelin a longtime supporter of WRC Please welcome Pascal Cuanon It's all a bit jet set here on my stage. Pascal has come straight from an aeroplane. Uh, welcome, Pascal. Happy New Year to you. Michelin and WRC go together, don't they, perfectly? You've been involved for many, many years in the championship. What's the appeal for you as a company? Well, Happy New Year to uh, everybody. Well, WRC is very interesting because uh, you know that we are involved in different series. And what we do is we target specific performance that we want to improve to work on. And uh, with the current rules where you are limited in the number of tires, you need to really work on something which is fast, but very um, adaptable to the different roads. And that's what you do also when you go and drive in Germany or in Spain or whatever, you don't change your tires. So we need to do the same thing with the, the different rally, is to develop solutions which are going to be winning solutions for the, you know, the whole season and not just one rally. And what we learn doing that can be transferred very quickly from track to street. And that's really the essence of Michelin being participating to, uh, to racing in general. So WRC is a very good target to do that. How do you convince people, the majority of drivers on the road, for whom tyres last a year or two, they're simply black and round, aren't they? They get in their car and they go. They work in the dry, they work in the, in the wet. How do you translate that message the, the, uh, of the, uh, the work that you do behind the scenes in rallying to the road user? It's a good question. It's tough because I guess, you know, here in this room, I'm a, I might be the only one who dreams about tires at night, you know? So how do we do that? But I think that's especially when the drivers finishes the, the stage and say, oh, you know, I did a mistake. I, did, I didn't get the right tires or whatever. That's a message that the tire is very important. And it's not just black and round, it's that if you got the wrong one or the, the right one, it's not a question of seconds, sometimes it's a question of minutes, especially what we will leave at the, at the end of this month in, uh, in Monte Carlo. So the fact that the teams, the drivers are working so hard to find the right, the right combination and express that at the end of the race is really the message. If I tell you that tire is important, you might say, well, you know, he's saying that because he's selling tires. If the driver He's talking about that. Now it's much more credible and important. Oliver, is it important to have the stability and the loyalty from a company like Michelin? Yeah, it gives us... Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah absolutely, yes. Uh, loyal partners give us a lot of stability in, in building up the brand WRC. It's not only a brand partner, it's also a commercial partner, of course, that allows us to invest further into the sport and in the promotion of the sport in the media productions. And at the same time, we are, we are happy to hear that we have the possibility to pay back to be on the one side, the, let's say, a research department, the laboratory to develop new products in a quite challenging environment, environment. but at the same time also a promotional partner to give global visibility to the brands. Michelin is the first brand in the history of the WRC that uh, last year enjoyed a global media value of more than 100 million euros. And this is also something that we can give in return. Ben, just quickly, um, any changes, any tweaks to what is now a, a really successful event for you guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're in the third year of a deal with the Welsh government. So 
Um, while we will build on the success of last year, we've got lots of new things coming for 2018. At the same time, this year, our priority is to secure the future of the event from 2019 onwards, uh, work out where we're going to be. We've had a fantastic partnership with the Welsh Government since 2000, as you said. Um, we've got a new partner in Daneshaw. We don't know where we're going to be in 2019, but that's one of the priorities for the next six months. Any chance of Lombard coming back? Oh, no, there, sorry. <laughs> there I go again. Uh, ignore me. Um, and the plan is to stay where you are in Wales? Yeah, certainly for this year, we'll be based up in Deeside again. Um, we've got some tweaks to make to the route. Uh, a lot of feedback from last year. It was a great event. It wasn't perfect. Uh, it'll never be perfect. It's always a compromise. So we will work hard on those compromises and it's going to be a, a fantastic event but with a slightly earlier date you wanted to go to November we've come back to the beginning of October so 4th to the 7th of October is the date for the diaries uh, don't forget it it's going to be t-shirt short sunshine and beautiful it's my birthday weekend that's fine yeah that's fine um, is it unrealistic now to expect to return to the rally of old where it moves around the country uh, yes I think so uh, I think in principle, and Oliver's on the record as saying that, you know, a, a little bit of variety is okay, but the infrastructure that goes around the events these days, there's certain requirements for it. Equally, I don't think we're going to two-day rallies, but, you know, we, we try to find that balance between the endurance, between the challenge for the drivers, the spectacle for the fans, the commercial viability of an event that at two days doesn't make any sense, at three days does, and uh, at four days starts to get difficult again. So. You know, it, it's all a big balance. The, if, I, if I'd known how difficult it was to organise an event of this magnitude when I took it on four years ago, I probably wouldn't have come anywhere near yeah. it. <laughs> uh, Mark, final question for you. Um, can we expect more Ford presence uh, on events in 2018? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're in this for the partnership, so we'll be up at M-Sport tomorrow uh, going through a lot of the technical projects, and that includes participation and in, uh, being at the events with the team. Uh, Pascal, finally, uh, DMAC no longer part of the championship, so you guys are on your own. Will you miss the competition? Yes, we do. It's always, you know, uh, I'm asked the question, well, you ask for competition, but uh, you by yourself. You know, we won't make bad tires just to help the competition. What we're going to do is to tr continue to develop and be as strong as possible, but we always to, you know, welcome and we love the competition because that's a way to really improve. We work with you know, with FIA and WRC to um, sometimes change the rules, so it's a new, a new challenge for us. But again, nothing replaces competition. We will have competition in WRC too, but WRC will see. But we'll, we'll keep working. Okay, good stuff. Uh, Oliver, let me ask you quickly and finally, how do we watch WRC in 2018? As uh, the WRC is broadcast worldwide in more than 150 countries and we have approximately 65 global broadcast partners. But what we also have is we have our own platform on our website wrc.com. You can find all the programs that we are producing on WRC Plus, which is a service where you can see all our live stages, but you're where you can also see uh, the programs as a video on demand service. Um, the absolute novelty which we are announcing here today and which will be very much also for the benefit of the visitors to the, to the auto show. From 2018 onwards, starting with Rally Monte Carlo, we will offer to the fans all the stages of all the rallies live. This means approximately 25 hours live content from every rally, starting with the opening ceremony covering all the, all the stages live, between the stages, going into an own studio, making analysis and interviews, covering the service, covering all the ceremonies in between, covering all the interview sessions in between, going back to the live stages. So as a fan, you just can go in and out whenever your time allows. The service will be available on WRC Plus. And to all the visitors of the Auto Show, you have on your entry ticket, a free voucher from us that allows you to join Rally Monte Carlo for free. If you were registering uh, online, you have received an email. Otherwise, there's four ladies here, WRC t-shirts on, that give you a free voucher and it allows you to join us for free on WRC.com uh, on the 25th of January in Rally Monte Carlo. Wow, that's great, isn't it? 
You're really kind of ramping up the innovation. It is a, it is a revolution in how this sport is, uh, is broadcast. Um, you can imagine that uh, covering rally on TV is a tremendous effort because we have to cover more than 300 stage kilometers. So we have helicopters, we have drones, we have a lot of exciting onboard footage. And uh, the positive thing about it is, is the flexibility that you have as a fan now. Still, you can watch the transmissions with the broadcast partners, of course. But on top of that, whenever your time allows, on this digital service, you take your mobile phone, you use the app, you take your computer, you come in, you see what the standing is, you get the latest update. Maybe then you have to sit in a car or in a train or on a bus, you don't have the time, you're landing, you, you, you lock in again, and you can follow the rally wherever you want, whenever you are live. And this is an absolute game changer in covering rally sports. Perfect. Um, I've got to leave it there because we've got so much WRC content. Um, I'm going to be here till midnight talking we have, rallying, we have which one is more fine. Goodie. We have one more goodie for the, for the uh, spectators of the auto show. If you register quickly, the first one will be uh, in a kind of lottery and have the chance uh, to win the co-drive in an M Sport World Rally car in Rally Portugal. So please go on the website wrc.com, put in your registration with a login code for free and join WRC+. Plus. Do it. That will be great. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. We wish you a successful 2018. Pascal Cournon, Mark Rushbrook, Ben Taylor and Olivier Tiesler. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Have Thanks a great show. Thank you. Uh, don't go too far away. We're continuing our live WRC 2018 launch. Um, can, you, can I ask you to do that somewhere else? Thank you very much. Gentlemen, thank you so much. All stages. All crashes. All drama. Watch the FIA World Rally Championship like never before. With more than 25 hours of live coverage from every rally, including continuous live TV studio, with expert analysis and behind the scenes stories. Live from the service park. And with our interactive program guide, you'll never miss a thing. Get all the action, all live. Anywhere, anytime. WRC Plus, all live. Very, very casual, very relaxed. Just, we'll just. Okay, folks, our WRC 2018 live launch. Oh, hello. 
I'm not, I'm not going to get much out of him, I don't think. Our live launch for WRC 2018 continues right here on the Autosport stage. Welcome, if you've just arrived at Autosport International. A real coup for us uh, to launch the championship here live in 2018. I'm going to be talking to the big hitters, the Grand Fromage uh, of the WRC, the four team principals to talk a little bit about 2017, reflect on an amazing season for the rebirth of the sport, and look ahead to 2018 for their respective teams. Please welcome, I hope in this order, from M Sport Ford World Rally Team, Malcolm Wilson, from Hyundai Shell Mobis WRT, Michel Nondor, from Toyota Gazoo Racing, Tommy Mackinnon, and from Citroen Total Abu Dhabi World Rally Team, Yves Maton. They were listening to me backstage. Excellent work. Gentlemen, great to see you. Uh, Happy New Year. Welcome to uh, Autosport International and a, 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 a really exciting new phase for WRC. Malcolm, let me start with you. Uh, world champions in 2017. The target's on your back now, isn't it? Yeah, the target is uh, certainly on my back. Um, and I definitely think uh, it'll be almost impossible to replicate what we experienced on Rally GB, uh, you know, winning the, both championships and winning the event. But uh, very happy. We've still got Sebastian driving and Elvin, so a really strong driver lineup. And uh, I just hope that the, the, it can be as exciting for all the fans and everybody as it's been in, uh, in 2017. Did it exceed your expectations last year? Four different winners from the first four rallies, seven winners in total. Every manufacturer won a rally. Yeah, I must admit, I did think that one manufacturer would really sort of steal the march on everybody because it's the first time in history that I've been involved that everybody has started with a brand new car all at the same time. You know, somebody's always developed one 12 months late and always had an advantage. So it was great to see that um, along with the FIA technical team and of course our technical guys from all the teams working together with such a set of regulations that gave us the best sporting spectacle that we've seen in WRC for, uh, for as long as I can remember. Have you had to make certain promises to Sebastian to keep him? Because I guess everybody was knocking on his door, weren't they? I think anybody in the business knows what the promises had to be. Uh, and they weren't about driving the car. They were... Uh... <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> uh, we'll come back to you, Malcolm. Um, uh, Michelle, welcome to the show. Hyundai, the fastest car, I think, on average in 2017. Uh, you won more rallies than anyone else. Frustrating to not take a championship for you? Well, no, not, uh, well, you know, uh, it's competition. So competition, uh, to win, you should have uh, everything uh, going well. Uh, okay, we, we fail in some aspect, and so in the end, the result is there. But, uh, you know, in the end, uh, the winner of the championship is... Uh, the team which has the best compromise in the performance, uh, durability, and, uh, and scoring uh, more points than the other. So we didn't have uh, all these items together, and then, uh, OK, it's hand like that. But uh, we're ready to fight back uh, this year. You ran your 2018 car on a couple of rallies last year. What are the major differences between the two? Well, the main difference, I think uh, it's uh, okay from outside, quite easy to see. We have uh, redesigned uh, the bodywork completely uh, for a dynamic. And uh, okay, we had introduced some uh, uh, jokers on the, on the engine and, uh, in the middle of the season already last year. So yes, in fact, uh, the, car, the car will be in the same specification we finish uh, Australia Rally. Tommy Toyota came back uh, in, in some style in 2017. You won your second rally with Yari Matti in Sweden. Was that beyond your expectations? Or were you expecting to win straight away? Uh, no, no, of course. Of course, we had no idea where we, where we were. Uh, that time, we, had a, we were first time all over and no data, no experience from previous years. Of course, uh, all big, big question marks all the time and uh, I would say, of course, we were on home, home territory, and that makes made it makes so so easier for us. We had a experience from that condition, but uh, yeah, for sure, for sure, we were all of us. We were satisfied a lot that you're a four-time world champion. Of course, is it more difficult running the team or driving for the team? Uh, well. <laughs> 
that that is uh, that is uh, I would say a little bit different type of challenges. <laughs> so you no, know, I, I, to being as a driver, it is you need really give everything out from your your for elements what you can uh, what you can give out and uh, and it's it's completely different different uh, world you give maximum concentration and uh, and uh, after the every rally you are you feel absolutely exhausted and uh, and uh, if you if you feel it's also emotional thing if you feel if you manage to win the rally you, it's absolutely brilliant it's the feeling is something which is very very difficult to describe it's absolutely something something or or opposite if you if you lose it it is uh, also very very bad to being being running the team and uh, and these moments of course you don't feel them so so big but uh, of course it's important for everybody we have a big number of people people working working and uh, and of course all of them they want to have uh, results and they want to enjoying and being part of that it is uh, different 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 Big challenges. Okay, um, Eve, um, Citroen in 2017. How do you reflect on the season? These guys made it uh, difficult for you, didn't they? Yes, for sure. The, the start of the season was um, quite uh, difficult. Now all the first uh, parts. Uh, okay, we we won uh, we won Mexico uh, on a on a on a different way. I can see the end was quite spectacular. Uh, but um, after that, uh, we, we we need some time to to have the car who was, uh, I will say, drivable uh, on every uh, type of surface. But uh, okay, the team worked really really hard during the summer, and uh, I have to say that the job they had done uh, and allow us since uh, Germany to show that uh, that the car is really going on a good way, and uh, we we are pretty confident that um, 2018 uh, will be a, a quite good season. Uh, how much development do you think there is to come in these cars across the year? A difficult one to, difficult one to explain perhaps? Yes, for, for sure. Uh, we work a lot and we, we start early in the season to think about 2018 and uh, we change um, a few important things on the car uh, and um, also uh, we did something that never we did in the past is trying uh, some different solutions during the races and uh, very early without testing. Sometimes it uh, put us in, in trouble. But um, okay, at the end, the most important is that we were able to win some time and to have a car at the end of the season what um, was at the, at the right level of pace. Malcolm Ford is back in a big way uh, for 2018. Um, that must lift some of the burden from you guys. Yeah, I think uh, the big the big advantage is that you know we've been able to secure Sebastian. That was the the priority. Um, but of course, the the big thing, another important aspect to Sebastian was the fact that we could you know remain competitive. Um, so we've got increased uh, technical support from Ford from uh, from Ford Performance. So um, hopefully we'll be able to. You know, keep working on a lot of a lot more aspects of the car to try and improve the performance. But it is very, very difficult now with these new technical regulations. You can only make sort of three changes to the chassis and three to the engine. So, you know, you've got to do a lot of testing, and you've got to be absolutely sure that these are worthwhile improvements on on every single rally, not just one particular rally. So, but it's uh, it's it's great to get that increased technical uh, backup. Um, just explain a little bit about uh, Elvin Evans' progress because it's been superb, hasn't it? And that win at home in November was really quite something. Yeah, I mean, I think we saw Elvin came very close to winning in Argentina. Unfortunately, we probably let him down with a small sort of technical issue. But um, he's just progressed so well throughout the year, along with Oit as well. But I think uh, you can't underestimate the, the influence that Sebastian brought to the team, not just to the drivers and co-drivers, but to everybody back in, in M Sport as well. It just gave everybody the lift that we were looking for. It was five years since we'd won an actual WRC event. Um, and then, of course, when you see Sebastian and Julian working together, you understand then why they're five times world champion. 
and uh, I think you know all the other guys learned so much, so much from him, and uh, we you know we saw the benefits of that with obviously Oit winning and uh, Elvin winning in Rally GB, and I think Elvin is now there's nothing like your first win to give you that extra boost of confidence to 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 carry on, and I'm sure that he's going to be a really strong contender this year. Have you forgiven Tommy for stealing uh, Oit yet? No, he, he'll be going away from the show with two black eyes later. <laughs> Brilliant. Michel, you have four drivers in 2018 and only three cars. How will you manage that? Well, in fact, uh, the third car will be shared between uh, Danny and Aiden. Uh, because, uh, okay, we couldn't afford uh, to run four cars for the complete championship. So we have to make a choice. Okay, it was not an easy one, but uh, we did that one. So, uh, in fact, uh, uh, both of them uh, will share car number six. Will you perhaps run a fourth car anywhere? Maybe Rally Deutschland as it's up the road from you guys? Well, in the moment, okay, nothing is decided, but uh, yes, uh, quite probably uh, some rally we will run a fourth car, but uh, in the moment there's no decision done. Tommy Monti is a couple of weeks away. It's such a fickle event. Um, impossible to predict what's going to happen, so I want you to predict what's going to happen. Um, you're a four-time winner. What do you say to your guys? Because you didn't win it four times by accident, did you? Uh, I think it was not very good uh, uh, comment from me, what I, what I gave them. I was uh, always very, very relaxed before the rally. I didn't do, I didn't even think about rally cars. I, I was just doing something else, skiing in Lapland and concentrating to doing something else. I was completely, co completely forget whole rallying. And, uh, and always before the rally, I, I felt a little bit bad. bad. I, 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 ha I haven't done enough preparation for that. For, and, uh, and so, so uh, that was my, my style to do that. And, and Maybe it was also a way to find good concentration for the for the event itself because a little bit bad feeling before. So, but I, I, I would say they have done quite a lot preparation, uh, testing uh, before Christmas and now after that, and so I think they they should be. But uh, my my words was only just relaxed. I talked to Colin McRae about your relaxed attitude. It used to drive him mad. He couldn't understand why you were so relaxed. <laughs> and there's talk of Rally Japan returning to the calendar. Would that be important for Toyota? Absolutely. Absolutely. To being at home territory, it is, it's really, I would like, we would like to, all of us, we would like to see that very much. And, uh, and uh, as I know very well, Japan as a uh, country and, uh, and uh, people uh, interest and, and motorsport fans and rally fans, I, I'm sure it could be one of the biggest success if we bring the rally in Japan. I think the service park would go slightly crazy, wouldn't it? Especially around the Toyota garage in Japan. Well, it doesn't need to be a big rally in Japan and it's, uh, it's really a it's big number of people. They are big fans. Uh, finally, Eve, uh, Sebastian Loeb. Uh, he's coming back in 2018 for three rallies. That's going to lift the team a lot, isn't it? Yes, for sure. It's a good, a good thing that he decided to, to, to be back for three, uh, for three events. Um, okay, we have a, a lot of history together. But also uh, his, uh, his knowledge uh, about uh, World Rally Car and World Rally Championship is very high. And it will help uh, everybody. Uh, and uh, I have to say, our drivers also are quite happy to have him, to have him back because uh, he did two test sessions with us, giving uh, some uh, good, uh, good feedback. And uh, I think it will be uh, good for, for the brand, for Citroën for sure, but also for the championship. If he goes well on those three rallies, I'm sure he will, um, he's a nine-time world champion. Is there a possibility for him to do more rallies? No, it's, it's quite difficult. His main program will be... Uh, the rally cross with, uh, with Peugeot, and uh, it will be really focused on that. That's the reason that uh, we plan these three events, uh, but uh, I think it will be very difficult to, uh, to let him do more. Okay, um, Monte Carlo coming up. How was the pre-event test for you guys? We, we have done one test for the moment. We, we will have another one before the start of, of the rally. I have to say that we had uh, some uh, quite uh, tricky uh, uh, conditions. 
we will be happy to, uh, and I hope we will have some uh, more normal conditions for the for the second test. Uh, but uh, it seems as drivers are uh, are really happy on this uh, kind of conditions where uh, last year uh, we were uh, we were not at the uh, at the right level. Then for sure uh, we did the part of the job. Now we have to see how the car is uh, on uh, on more uh, dry conditions. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Uh, you're extremely busy over the course of the day. You'll be back later on with your drivers to uh, talk a little bit more about WRC. Thank you in the meantime. Malcolm Wilson, Michel Nondor, Tommy Mackinnon and Yves Maton. Thank you, gentlemen. Tommy, don't break my microphone. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, don't go too far away, ladies and gents. We'll be back with more guests here on the Autosport stage in a few moments. Okay, folks, we've lost our chairs because there are thousands of us on stage for this next slot. We're going to meet the teams. We're going to meet the Factory World Championship Rally teams uh, in some sort of order, and we'll discuss uh, various things with sporting directors and drivers. Here's a little teaser of what we can expect uh, in the next quarter of an hour. Right, we start with Toyota Gazoo Racing. We're going to meet the drivers and co-drivers and the sporting director. So please welcome, first of all, the sporting director, former co-driver of Tommy Mackinnon, of course, Kai Lindstrom. Drivers Yari Matti Latvala and his co-driver Mika Antilla. Oit Tanak and Martin Javioja. And Esa Pekka Lappi and the Yanni Firm. They're going to stand in little groups, I hope. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, so we're going to have to pass the microphones around a little bit. Kai, let me start with you. You have a good relationship with Tommy. Uh, you sat next to him for uh, some time in WRC. What's he like to work with? Well, Tommy is as easy as he was in the rally car. So, yeah, he, he's very, very easy to work with. And uh, obviously, it's a Finnish, Finnish mentality that if, if something comes up, we say that straight away and then it's out of the way. Um, is he finding the transition from multiple world champion driver to, to team boss easy? Does it come to him naturally? Uh, yeah, for sure. If, if we think about that, he finished rallying on 2003, so it's a, it's a long time enough to, to get away from the driving. So I think the, the adapt has been quite, quite easy. Just outline for us your role uh, at Toyota. What is it you do for the team? Yeah, I'm working as a sporting director, so basically me and my team, we are in charge of everything. I would say like uh, the logistics size and, and from the beginning when we start planning the rally until the rally finishes and we are back home. Did you expect as a team to win so quickly in the second rally last year? Well, last year I was still co-driving one of these Toyotas and it was very very pleased to see that uh, uh, the development work was was good and, and we managed to get good results both in, in Monte Carlo and then the first victory with uh, Jari Matti and Mika in Sweden. So for sure it was uh, 
pleasing to see and uh, honestly maybe a little bit surprised that it happened so quickly. Right, let's meet the drivers and their respective co-drivers. Uh, first of all, uh, Yari Mati Latvala, welcome to Autosport International. A win second time out for you in Sweden was a great start. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely fantastic to start with a new team. And I didn't even myself, I didn't, you know, I didn't expect that we, uh, we could win so, so quickly in the, in the season. I must say, when we, with, with Mika, when we joined the team in the end of the uh, 2016 on December, um, we started a very uh, big testing uh, process, uh, what we could do at the end of the year. And uh, I must say that by the start of the year 2017, I could already see that the, the potential is growing. But, uh, but still, of course, it was a surprise to, to win so early on. The year started well, but there were some frustrations along the way uh, in 2017. How do you address those for this year? Yeah, the springtime was, was going pretty well for us. And, but then, then we faced uh, in Poland, we got technical issue. Then we had another technical issue in, in Finland. And then one more in, in Germany. So we lost quite a lot of points on that point. But I mean, it was first, our first year and, and this was something what you have to expect that uh, for sure it's things can happen you know and that's where you learn and and that's why we were there i mean of course your your mind you want to win and you want to go for the uh, targeting the, the championship title but i think the first year was still the learning year and even though the hopes were looking very good good in the springtime but i you just i try to be realistic and uh, and overall i'm I'm happy how the first year went. We learned it a lot. We know which areas we had to improve. We learned it from the problems. And uh, I think we are now uh, s ready for the, for the second, second year. And I mean, I think we, wish we should be competitive. Mika, you've sat alongside this man for, oh, 100 years now. Uh, how is the relationship? Are you guys still motivated by each other? Yeah, for sure we are motivated. I mean, uh, like Jari Matti was saying, so now the second year with the new team. So from the beginning, we knew that the first year is a learning year, but now it's, it's time to basically to score the results from the first year. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. And, and for sure, we both are. Have you found it easy to ingratiate yourself into a new team to, to, to settle in after all those years with, with M Sport and MVW? Yeah, for sure. But of course, we have to remember that there's one, one uh, key factor for us is that we are coming from the same country as the team is coming. So, I mean, it's, it's when you know the, the mentality and, 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 mentality and, the, and the, the way how the people are working in your own country, for sure, it's always easier like that. And especially when the team is like a new and then you, can, you, can, you feel that you can put a good input from your, from your experience. So for sure, that is satisfying. Do you guys still shout at each other when you make mistakes? Sometimes. Yeah. You don't do what Gianluigi Galli used to do and smack him over the head. <laughs> no, I don't. Do, do, <laughs> I do that after the rally. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's moving on to you. Um, what was the motivation for you to move from M Sport to Toyota for this year? I think uh, it, was, it was quite easy to see for everyone. Uh, the team was doing a really good job this uh, last year. So, uh, yeah, especially... Yari might and Esa Pekka winning rallies, so uh, yeah, we all know it was the very first season for them, but uh, already very competitive, and uh, yeah, uh, I could see how, how much potential there is still in the team, so uh, yeah, I, I think uh, that was uh, kind of the key, just uh, to make sure that I can be part of this uh, team in the coming years, and, and uh, I expect to have my best uh, options here to, to fight for the title. And of course, winning rallies now, as you did on several occasions last year, does that give you extra confidence? Is that an extra help coming into a new year? I think, uh, yeah, we need to win rallies to, to fight for the championship or to win the championship. So, uh, yeah, uh, just need to get used to the team now, just uh, work out some things. But, uh, yeah, I think so far the preparation has been going uh, really well. So uh, I, I feel already very welcome in the team and... and uh, the people are, or the team, all the people are supporting really well. So, uh, yeah, I think the development is, is uh, going in a good way. So uh, we will see in, uh, soon in a few weeks uh, how we are uh, compared to the clock, you know, but, uh, but normally it looks to be good at the moment. Yeah. 
Martin, Monte Carlo in a few weeks. Is that the most difficult event to prepare for? The conditions are weird, aren't they, quite often? Yes, as we see all over the Europe at the moment, it's like snowing, even in Spain. Eh? So, not at, at the moment, not in Estonia, but, uh, but uh, yeah, for sure Monte Carlo is, I believe, the most challenging, uh, challenging uh, event for old calendar, but, uh, but it's good to be that it's, it's the first uh, rally, then it's uh, behind you and uh, you can uh, continue with uh, maybe more enjoyable rallies. Even the events you've done many times, you can go down the stage dozens of times, you learn something, don't you? In every corner, going down every straight, each time you do it. Yeah, <laughs> especially, especially in Monte, where you don't know what to expect, uh, if there is a snow, ice or wet, wet road, so you don't, you don't never know what, what's, what to expect. Uh, Esa Pekka, uh, a remarkable season for you. Winning your home rally, Rally Finland, for Toyota was an incredible thing. You must be very pleased with how it went. For sure. Um, nobody ever expected it. Uh, me neither. I mean, I wanted to do it, for, but... Um, as a first year with the World Rally car and then first time attending that rally with the World Rally car, I was, I was hoping for podium and, and okay, then it happened and <laughs> it was a special feeling and, and still it is. It's a really, really <laughs> nice memory. And you learn from Tommy Mackinnon, of course. He won Thousand Lakes, didn't he, in, a, in an Escort Cosworth in 94. No one, no one saw that coming and that kind of kick-started his career. Has he given you some good advice? Not too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> uh, he's, you know, he drove, uh, I mean, he st stopped, what, 2003? So it's quite a long time ago. So these new cars are a bit different and, and Rally World somehow has changed. For sure, he has give me, uh, given me some advices and I need to listen and then I, I need to take some tips and the others are just <laughs> going away. <laughs> uh, what can you hope to achieve in 2018? Can you win everywhere now? Can you mount a, a championship challenge? I, I still miss uh, Mexico and Argentina. I've never done, done those races before. So um, it's the first full season. And, and the approach needs to be uh, a bit different than before. I mean, I need to be a bit more consistent. And yeah, still I need experience. The first half of the season is not so strong, strong for me in point of uh, experience. But then the second half should be better. Yanni, sitting alongside this young man in these new cars, is it much more dramatic in these new cars than it used to be? Are they that much faster? Hard to compare because I haven't been in the old, old spec WRC cars, but for sure, these new cars, it's exciting and good fun to be sitting in and I think also to be spectating those. Oh, yeah, you came from WRC too, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, preparations for Monty, how are they going? Very well, thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah. Is that corroborated by the sporting director? Preparations going well? Yes, they, they are going well. Uh, boys finished their testing already, so that side is done. That, that's much I can reveal from to top Janne's answer. Uh, yeah, everybody is busy for sure. I mean, the, the break is not very long between last year's Australia and, and Monte Carlo, but... Uh, I think everything is going, going okay, and there's always a last minute, so we do well. Gentlemen, we wish you well. Thank you for joining us uh, for the official launch in 2018. Best of luck to you. Kai Lindstrom, Yari Mati Latvala, Mika Antilla, Oit Tanak, Martin Jarveova, Esa Pekalapi, and Yanni Firm. I did that without looking down. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Kai. Cheers. Right, much more uh, action to come here on the Autosport stage, including meeting our other World Championship Rally teams. I'll be talking to James Barkley, boss of the Jaguar Formula E team. Gary Paffett, DTM Mercedes star, will be here. Susie Wolfe will be here to talk a little bit about Dare to be Different, the initiative to promote women in motorsport. So lots to come on the stage. Don't go too far away. All stages... All crashes. All drama. All live. Watch 
It's the FIA World Rally Championship like never before. With more than 25 hours of live coverage from every rally, including continuous live TV studio, with expert analysis and behind the scenes stories, live from the service park. And with our interactive program guide, you'll never miss a thing. Get all the action, all live. Anywhere, anytime. WRC Plus, all live. Right, let's continue then our WRC 2018 live launch. Good to have your company uh, here at the NEC and, of course, on the live stream around the world, uh, wherever you are watching. We start now with Citroen. Here's a little teaser of what we can expect. Right, please welcome. Is that working? Hello, yes it is. Please welcome from the Citroen Abu Dhabi World Rally team, team principal Eve Maton, drivers Chris Meek and his co-driver Paul Nagel, and Craig Breen and Scott Martin. Welcome chaps. Eve, let me start with you. Welcome to the show. This is a new and innovative way to launch the championship, isn't it? Yes, but uh, I have to say I'm, I'm quite happy. Uh, we see uh, since this morning uh, always a quite, a quite passion here about, uh, about motorsport. And, uh, and to be here to launch the championship, uh, it's, it's a very good start for, for the championship, I have to say. 2017 was an amazing year. Four different winners in the first four rallies, seven different winners. Every manufacturer won at least one rally. Did it exceed your expectations and Citroën's expectations? Yes, for sure. I have to say that the new rules and the new technical rules, the new cars uh, uh, bring uh, a lot of success to the championship. I think it's maybe, I, I can't remember, 15 years or 10, 10 years that we did not have a, a championship uh, uh, like that. Uh, and um, it made the, the championship um, really interesting and, and, and exciting, and it's, it's what we want. Uh, and uh, also, it, uh, it brings a, a good value for all the manufacturers who are in, involved. I'll come back to you in a minute, because we've got a bit of a surprise in a few minutes' time. Chris, um, car's a bit different to a Super 1600C2, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um Certainly the new generation cars that were introduced last year, they're, they're, for me, I have to applaud the FIA to, to come up with the rules, the set of rules they did. It's, it's really benefited the championship. It's, it's nearly like the new era of Group B. The cars are visually you know, attractive. And uh, yeah, for us drivers with the increase in horsepower, there, there's something else to drive for sure. A lot more horsepower than a Super 1600. But uh, yeah, um, what can I say? We... 2017 for us was a little bit of a struggle at times, but underlying speed was there. And we proved the capabilities of the C3 on, on numerous rallies. We, we obviously won the two events. We could have won one or two more. So, uh, yeah, hopefully in the off-season, you know, the parts that we hopefully can introduce in the, in the first few rallies of, uh, of 2018, we can uh, be more consistent and hopefully mount a, a challenge for the championship. I wish we had some VT of it, but just... Talk us through what on earth was going on at the end of Rally Mexico. You're bouncing your way around a car park and through some bushes and around an industrial estate. And uh, I only go where he tells me. So uh, <laughs> Yes, I, kn I knew it would be Paul's fault. <laughs> A classic. Uh, yeah, um, for sure. That's one that will live long in the memory, for sure. Um, yeah, to put in all the hard work during the weekend, uh, you know, to be honest, it's not one of my proudest moments. You know, it, it will live long in the memory, like I say, but... Uh, but it's made, yeah. you a, it's made you a YouTube sensation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and the famous words from Paul, beep, beep, um, as we went through the hedge. But, yeah, that's rally. That's what makes our sport so fascinating. Um, there's very few other forms of motorsport where you could leave the circuit, come back on, and uh, still win. So, um, for sure, it was one way to do it and not one that I'd be hoping to repeat anytime soon. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, do get onto YouTube and type in Chris Meek Mexico 2017. It's brilliant and bizarre. Was it your fault, Paul? Uh, no. <laughs> De definitely not, no, but I was uh, heavily involved in the whole 
getting out of the car park and I didn't give him any pace notes either in the car park. He figured it out himself. <laughs> just a blank sheet, just a white sheet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you were kind of guessing to get out, weren't you? Yeah, kind of guessing. I didn't say nothing. I left it up to Chris to go right or left when we were in the car park. But he found a hole in the hedge and luckily the rest is history. Amazing, amazing. You guys have worked together for many years. You've experienced extreme highs and, 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 and fairly extreme lows. Are you still motivated as a pair to, to do this and do it properly? Yeah, we are. Um, last year was a difficult season. We had a um, very difficult middle of the part of the season, not doing Poland and Sardinia and Finland were difficult, but uh, we turned the corner the second half of the season and uh, to win in Spain convincingly and uh, with two solid results in the other two rallies, uh, it bodes well for next year. And uh, as we say, we, we have highs and lows, but uh, the motivation, the determination is there to try and challenge for the title this year. Craig Green, you're back with the team in 2018. Not the full programme you would have wanted, but 10 of the 13 rallies is, uh, is still pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, yeah, nice to be back again. Uh, it would have been nice to do the full season and, and try to capitalise on everything we learned last year. But anyway, uh, in any case, we're yeah, really motivated to, to get the season started. And um, yeah, you know, we had a couple of tests, uh, tests uh, just before Christmas for Monty. And uh, yeah, again, back in the car next week. So really, uh, really looking forward to it. When you first drove these new cars, did you kind of think, wow, these are mega? <laughs> yeah, uh, I... My transition from uh, from R5 to, w to WRC was uh, to the old WRC was a quite short one. So uh, for me, it was uh, really extreme the the, the step up. But um, you you feel like you're a bit of a superhero when you drive these cars. Uh, they really uh, they're, they're something special. Not only by the speed, but uh, the, the the whole potential of the package and with everything together. Uh, it uh, especially when you get to a dry tarmac. Uh, you know, it's sometimes uh, yeah uh, it goes beyond belief of, of what it can do. So uh, it's. Uh, a nice part to be a nice time to be part of the sport. Scott, what's it like working with this uh, young man? Yeah, really good. Like Craig said, he had a, a short time in the the old WRC car. So, but the amount of work that the, that Craig puts in has really helped him, and uh, he had a, a really consistent season and very little mistakes, um, which was key to get all the experience we could for for the 2018 season. Uh, Monty's a couple of weeks away, and it's such a weird event isn't it for a, especially from a co-driver's point of view um there's a lot of kind of ad-libbing to be done isn't there despite the best preparations you can make how are preparations going this time yeah really good uh, as craig said we tested in december last year uh, we have some tests next week but like you said monte carlo rally um it can throw anything at you from a stage covered in snow and then the next stage you could go to is full dry tarmac so but we're in a good team and they have bags of experience in, in these conditions and on this rally. So hopefully we can have a good test next week and use all the experience that Citroen have on this event. Um, you know, it's an important event for Citroen, so hopefully we can kick off the season with a good start. Chris, you finished on the podium in the Monty before. What's the, what's the trick to Monty? Yeah, I was able to win it in the Junior World Championship. We got the podium uh, in our first, first attempt in a World Rally car in 2014. Um, I battled for the lead with Seb Ogier in 2016 all the way through the rally. Um, fortunately caught out by a big stone that had been pulled up out of the ground. But, you yeah, know, we've always sort of found ourselves in a good position in Monty. Um, for sure, it's an event that can always catch you out at any moment. But you can never go to Monte Carlo preempting anything because the weather can change at the click of a fingers. Um, like Scott said, you find yourself 90% of the time on the wrong tire but it's the best tyre for the, for the loop. Um, even in one stage, you can find all the conditions, and uh, certainly the Monte organisers know how to put a twist in, and this year they've certainly done the twist at the very beginning. We have the famous sister on Thorard stage ran in reverse direction, 36 kilometres at night as the first stage of the championship, so uh, that's going to be a huge challenge um, to kick off, but um, yeah, you just have to rely on your experience on, the, on that type of on that type of rally and rely on your gut instinct and uh, yeah, cross your fingers as well. Are you ready to make a championship challenge now? It's difficult, wasn't, wasn't it, last year for you at times when you were rested for a, a rally? Do you uh, struggle to keep the motivation up? Yeah, rested is one way to put it, but um, yeah, certainly 17 wasn't, wasn't what we wanted. Um, 
you know, I, I, I definitely want to be on a championship hunt. I don't think there's any driver in the World Championship that hasn't the ambition to try to be World Rally Champion, and I'm no different. Um, I think, you know, throughout 2017, we learned a lot. Even the negative points and the really low points, you have to learn from that. And uh, I think as a team, hopefully now we can uh, regroup and, and use our knowledge from last year to introduce some new parts to the car that we can, uh, we can put to good use. So, yeah, for sure. The aim is to be more consistent from my own point of view and, and from the car's point of view. So uh, we've seen last year that the car is the underlying speed to win rallies. Um, we don't need to win every one. Like we've seen Seb Ogier won only two rallies last year and was world champion. So um, we just need to bring the consistency and a lot more podiums. Craig, you were pretty consistent in 2017. I think you were fifth on six occasions. That's the key, isn't it? Consistency. Yeah, um, my, my season wasn't uh, as exciting. I had no trips into car parks, uh, not, nothing like that. But uh, it was, uh, yeah, we, we got uh, yeah we got our own and we we scored points in the, a lot of the rallies. But I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to say that I'm complacent. to always be you know somebody that's finishing consistently. You know, picking up fourth and fifth places. I, you know, like Chris said, we, we we all want to be a world champion. So uh, it's. It's time now that we, we turn up the wick a little bit. It's uh, now be my second uh, second proper season in in, uh, in the WRC. So uh, I really want to try and uh, you know get uh, you know get a little bit further up, up uh, onto the podium positions more uh, more frequently and uh, you know maybe even fighting for a win on, uh, on on one or two events during the year as well if I can. And some old boy called Loeb's coming back for three rallies. That's going to kind of shake things up a bit, isn't it? Yeah, shake shake things indeed. So um, it's uh, yeah, it's how can I say? Uh, great that he's going to be back. Um, you know, obviously a true legend of the sport, nine-time world champion. I think uh, you know from a, from a media side and from you know the spectator side, it'll definitely uh, be a huge benefit. To everyone, everyone will love to see him back. And um, yeah, I wish him all the best. Eve, can Sebastian Loeb still bring something to the team despite only doing three rallies? On to me. Uh, on the media side, uh, for sure, yes, will bring a lot. Um, okay, you yeah, have um, a lot of experience also from the World Rally uh, Championship, and uh, I know uh, he has also a lot of experience, some other type of cars, and uh, for sure it can, uh, it can bring us maybe more confirmations that uh, from some of the feedback we, we had from uh, Greg and, and from Chris, but it's always interesting. We have one final twist in the tale. Uh, we have an extra driver, don't we, for Citroën? Uh, in 2018. Shall I bring him on? Yes, yeah. for sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mads Osberg. <laughs> Pass him a microphone. Well, this is a surprise. What, what's going on? Well, it's, uh, it's a small surprise to me as well. So, uh, no, it's, uh, I'm really happy and really honoured to, to be a part of the team for, uh, for Rally Sweden, uh, which will be my first event of the year and uh, of course uh, the only one uh, for the moment but uh, I feel really motivated and uh, I hope that together we can deliver good results and hopefully have a few more appearances during the year. So you really need to come out of the blocks don't you uh, straight away and, and prove yourself to get more rallies? Absolutely I think it's it's important I know this this team is a great team I worked with them in the past and I know what they stand for, so uh, if, if you're not delivering, it can be difficult. So I will absolutely do my best. And to be honest, it couldn't be a better rally to start with than, than Sweden. It would, uh, it's one of my favorite events, and I've been on the podium many, many times there. So I will try to, to achieve the same, team, same thing again. Is it a big step up now to be with a manufacturer team? You've, you've had a couple of years running your own uh, team, Adapter, haven't you? Will it be, will it be different? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, I, I've been in this team before. I've been in other teams as well. But to, to run privately is always a big challenge. And we saw that last year with the new cars coming in, that uh, it was, uh, was a massive challenge to run it privately. Although I think we did well. But uh, it was difficult to, to fight with the, the big teams. Okay, we wish you well. And hopefully you'll get, uh, get the result you, uh, you need and you'll do more rallies and maybe a full-time return in 2019. That's the target. Perfect. Uh, our Citroen uh, guys, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please put your hands together for Yves Maton, Chris Meek and Paul Nagel, Craig Breen and Scott Martin, and Mads Osberg. Thanks, fellas.
Right, let's meet another of our fully blown factory World Rally Championship teams. Have a look at the screen, and this is what we're going to be talking about over the next 15 minutes. Yep, it's the world champions, M Sport, Ford, World Rally Team. Please welcome team principal, Malcolm Wilson. From Ford Performance, Mark Rushbrook. Drivers, Sebastian Ogier and his co-driver, Julien Ingracia. Sorry, Malcolm. Um, and uh, Elvin Evans and Dan Barrett. That's a nice little VT, isn't it? Spraying the champagne, ruining the car, making a mess in the service park. It's not, as, it's not as bad as the drivers standing on the bonnet and the roof and causing me extra money, extra cost. Yeah. But do, to be honest, I didn't mind in Rally GP. Do you have to reshell it after that, after they dance around on it? Well, we tell them that we have to reshell it, but we just you know, do a, get the hammers and strain it out a bit. Comes out of the wages, doesn't it? Um, no, let's be serious. World champions for the first time in a decade. Um, really, as, as a privateer team, um, pretty special. Yeah, an incredible moment. Uh, the best, certainly, for the history of M Sport. But um, we were fortunate enough to get Sebastian and Julian on board, and uh, we felt that we had a good car. And then, of course, Sebastian came and drove it at, after Rally Australia in 2016, and uh, said that he was reasonably happy with it. A few things still to do, um, but again, I think the guys did a great job. And uh, I always felt that the championship last year would probably come down to not only Seb's experience and speed, but the reliability. And I think uh, we had that on really most of the events. And more importantly, we had a, a car on the podium on every single rally, which no other manufacturer did. And um, that was certainly, I think, a strong point for us winning the championship. No question, we've got to continue and keep developing and improve the performance of the car for next year. So. There's definitely more pressure on this year than there was last year. When VW pulled out, did you think, oh, yes? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, there's Straight no... Straight on the phone to Sepp. It was no I, question. I can't really say that. <laughs> it was no question. I mean, uh, I tried to get Sebastian whenever it was, 2011, 2010, 12, or whatever. And, um, you know, when you see what he did with VW, then... Uh, I made it my priority. It was uh, obviously very difficult for us, the position we're in, but um, I felt we had to do it. There was never ever going to be an, o an opportunity like it again. And uh, I felt that, you know, all the people in Emma Sport would be good enough. Um, all we needed was Sebastian and Julian to do the job, and, and what a fantastic job they did for us. I love that VT of you at M Sport. Tums, now it's, it's a, a ramped up effort and it's more public. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a long-term relationship that we've had tw 20 plus years uh, in different forms over the years. What Malcolm and M Sport and, and the drivers were able to do last year with the, the new cars, with the new rules, was just fantastic. Uh, we were part of homologating that car. Um, but what we were really want to do this year is bring the technical tools that we have available inside of Ford Performance uh, to keep that car at the front, to get everything we can out of the engine, the aerodynamics, the chassis, and uh, give the drivers and the team the best car that, that they can have. There is a development war going to go on, isn't there? Um, because these cars are really high tech now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a, attention to a lot of detail and continuing to progress that and every little piece we can do to help the car uh, will, will help the team. Uh, Sebastian, uh, five world champions in a row. Uh, you came from the, the might of Volkswagen into a, a privateer team and got the job done again. Very satisfying for you? Uh, it was definitely very satisfying because um, in motorsport, uh, you know you cannot sh achieve uh, things alone. And definitely with uh, Volkswagen, we had a big uh, winning uh, machine with us that we uh, developed over the years. But uh, then we had to restart uh, a bit more, um, let's say, from a lower level uh, last year, but at least I, I knew from the beginning that the experience of M Sport uh, will offer us an opportunity to to show what we are capable of. And uh, 
in this way we were right. Uh, I think uh, it's amazing uh, what, uh, what the guys have done. Um, maybe with a bit less uh, budget than the others, but uh, at the end uh, this car was extremely reliable and uh, give us a chance for another title so we can be uh, yeah, proud of uh, what we've done. You must have noticed a change from the dominance of the Volkswagen Polo. You only won two rallies uh, in 2017, which was a surprise, I guess. Yeah, of course I would have loved to win more, but uh, there is a different reason for it. Uh, one of this is still uh, uh, also the, the regulation. Uh, when you are leading championship, it's become very difficult in our days to win rally, uh, opening the road on gravel. So. Uh, uh, that was one of the reasons, but also um, sometimes I was not as quick as I wanted, so that's why we have still some uh, interesting challenge ahead of us. We uh, uh, want to keep working very hard, developing the car, especially now with uh, even more support from uh, the Ford Performance, and uh, the target is to be even quicker than last year and be able to, to win more rally. Was Ford's increased involvement crucial to you staying? Yes, it was. Uh, that was no secret that I wanted to, uh, to have that because, uh, uh, yeah, this, this special performance that we've done last year on the long term, it uh, will have become harder and harder. And uh, to, keep, uh, to keep it up against other manufacturers, you needed to have a, uh, a good uh, backing. And uh, that's, I think, what we have now. So I'm uh, looking forward to it. Doesn't mean uh, it's going to be easy. Uh, we have maybe more possibility in the hand, but now we still have to use them and uh, uh, yeah, be able to bring the car on, uh, on another level if possible. Julian, it's not all about him, is it? I mean, you must take some of the credit for the five world championships. Sorry, have you been what? You, you must take some of the credit for the championships. Uh, like Seb said, it's, uh, not, it's not just him. No, it's, it's not you just as well. Team, it's not just me. It's, it's the, the whole team. Uh, but he, for sure, if you want to speak about the co-drivers, for sure we we are working on the on the shade, let's say. Uh, but we want that because we need some uh, some time to work. We need some concentration, and for sure, when we enter the team, um, it was a lot of things to discover. Uh, people, um, the car, how the the team is running, and we we I think we had a very good match immediately to, together. We went essentially um, to, to the main points and we didn't lose time and we, we didn't do any mistakes uh, almost during the whole year. So it, it, this is part of the performance also. I mean, basically, you tell him what to do, don't you? Yeah, he does, he does what you say. I, I we, mean, know, we know that's how it works. I, I try to. Sometimes uh, <laughs> when I watch the on, on boards, uh, I'm, I'm telling myself that we are crazy to drive those speeds. But when you are inside the car, the, everything is under control, let's say. This is... Um, this is a, a nice spot, uh, and when you have to share uh, so much time into a car at 150 kilometers per hour in the smallest path you can have in your, in your campaign, um, it's, a, it's, it's a nice adventure, yeah, as a good driver. Do you blame each other when it goes wrong? It doesn't go wrong very often, I know that. Do you blame? Always good driver. Yeah, the, this it, is, this well, is even the first in, rule. Even in, Catalonia, mistake, this is a even in Catalonia, when you smack the barrier on the last stage, <laughs> it's, it's Julian's fault, isn't it? Yeah. We used to call it misheard note, I think back in Malcolm's day. Um, right, I want a big, big, hearty round of applause, please. Uh, in November, we had our first Welsh winner of a World Championship Rally, and he did it at home. Elvin Evans, everybody. I bet you probably couldn't believe it, could you? As a lad, chasing after your old man on the RAC, thinking one day I want to do this. Yeah, for sure. That seems uh, a very long time ago now, and uh, obviously a lot of hard work and, and what have you later. Then uh, you know we mani finally managed to to achieve it. So yeah, I mean it was a, a good feeling at the time, but uh, obviously now it leaves me wanting more of it. Um, does it give you the confidence in going into a new season with a full program? Can you win any rally now? Well, I, I certainly, uh, you know, we've only won one, but, uh, you know, it certainly helps to, to put us in the right frame of mind to, to go to any rally with the aim to win. Um, that's certainly what we'll be trying to do this year, but uh, for, by all means, you know, it won't be easy. You know, we've seen, uh, you know, the, the likes of competition be very, very strong towards the end of last year. So, you know, we know it's not going to be easy, but, uh, you know, we're definitely aiming for, for the higher positions this year. You've done WRC Academy, you've done WRC2, you've done BRC. Are these things a whole new ball game? Yeah, for sure. I think everything is, is a different ball game. The events are long and difficult. You know, the cars are faster, the competition is faster. Um, so, for sure, it makes you definitely raise your game. And, and you know, this is the pinnacle of, of rallying. And, uh, you know, for sure, everything is, is 
bigger and better, I would say. And can you learn from Sebastian? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, he's not five-time world champion by fluke, you know. So, uh, you know, when you have that amount of experience and, and expertise right by your side, you'd be a, a fool not to take advantage and, and learn as much as you can from him. He's going to keep some secrets to himself, though, isn't he? I'm sure he will, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, what was it like in Wales? Was he, was he cool and calm? Or was it, was it really stressful? No, it was pretty cool and calm. I think uh, the whole weekend we were really, both throughout the weekend, but there was no time really other than maybe Sunday morning that we kind of really started to think maybe we can actually do this. And it, the reality, you know, was, was very, very good. And the D-Mac tyres helped, didn't they? I mean, I guess we, we can't pin it all on that because you've, got to, you've still got to drive the thing, but it's kind of a perfect storm, wasn't it, for you that week? Yeah, the package that we had that week from the car to the tyres was very... Yeah, um, and I think we've all touched on it. I think we all realised that it's, you know, last year was competitive, but I think it's going to be even more competitive. Uh, each manufacturer's got a really good driver lineup. So we, we certainly know that we've got a battle on our hands going into, into this season. Um, but just hopefully then we can do enough work and keep uh, progressing the car and having to give uh, these guys the tools to do the job. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be difficult, but uh, I'm standing here, I think we still, we, you know, I think everybody knows that they're in with a chance. You've been involved in the championship for uh, at least 100 years. You've seen... Group B, Group A, WRC. Is, is this a defining moment for WRC? You know I meant that affectionately, don't you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. I've got very fond memories, as you know, of, of the, the Group B era because I was involved in driving at that point in time. But I think from uh, the sporting point of view and for the fun, this is definitely uh, the most successful time and the best times that we've had in WRC as long as I can remember. And I think that has been brought about by the FIA and our own technical teams within the different manufacturers to come up with a, a set of technical regulations that um, make the cars so evenly matched, um, which has given us this great competition this year. And be the fact that we're very limited as to what we can do in terms of improvement going forward as well, then uh, I hope, sincerely hope, that we can, we can still have that close competition throughout 2018. Mark, some of you guys are at M Sport next week. The pressure's on, isn't it? Monty's a fortnight away. Um, what, what sort of things are you going to be doing when you get there? Well, uh, the main thing we want to go through are the, the technical projects that we're starting with them um, or increasing with them across all parts of the car. So it's optimizing the engine, using our advanced analytical tools to uh, improve on the very strong base that they already have. The aerodynamics using our computational fluid dynamic tools, again, to help that and access to our wind tunnels that we have, and also the chassis dynamics. So we'll, we'll go through. Um, we're going to pay attention to every detail in the car and make sure we uh, get optimize everything that we can. You mentioned CFD. I mean, it's F1 tech, isn't it now, in WRC? Yeah, absolutely. The, um, <clears throat> the tool that we have created in Ford Performance uh, we're using it across all of our racing series, including WEC with the GT, NASCAR, and, and everything else. Um, and we've got a lot of computing power uh, in the company that we're using to uh, help everything we can and, and run that CFT and optimize. Seth, I'm going to put you on the spot quickly. Final question. Who are you most worried about? No one. <laughs> no, <Excellent>. I mean, <laughs> the, tr the truth is we just come. We just spoke about the fact that at the moment it's uh, very open in the championship and it would be a big mistake to say, okay, forget about this team, they have no chance. I think every, every team got a chance at the moment. Every car can be a winning car and there is strong drivers in every team. So to be honest, it's, uh, uh, it's better to focus on yourself when you start the season, give your best and wait after some rallies to see who, who is coming up. But uh, it might be pretty open once again and uh, I don't want to forget anyone to be honest uh, i respect uh, all of my contender and your old friend mr loeb is back for only three rallies but are you chasing his nine championships not at all uh, i think i'm already extremely happy with what i achieved uh, the last years of course if i'm there is to try to get more but uh, at the moment we have five so anyway there's no uh, no way to think about uh, beating nine. We still still have to try to reach the sixth title. And uh, 
yeah, I think it's still a very, very long way to think about it. So it's definitely not a target. And uh, it's nice to Sepsi coming back with us. But uh, yeah, the truth is uh, will be hard to compare anything as uh, we have a very uh, guest friendly regulation at the moment. So uh, it's, it will help him a bit. But uh, let, let's see what's, what happens. Elvin, same question to you. Who are you most worried about? I guess you probably want to beat Chris and Craig, don't you, for, to uphold British honours? Yeah, like, like Seb says, I don't think you can discount anybody, but, um, you know, uh, he's certainly the man with a, with a target on his back, you know, champion for the last five years. Everybody's going to want to beat him. Um, so, you know, we, we'll be doing our best to do so with, obviously, the rest of the field. Good stuff, guys. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show and very best of luck for 2018. Our M Sport Ford guys, everybody, Malcolm Wilson, Mark Rushbrook, Sebastian Ogier and Julian Ingracia and Elvin Evans and Dan Barrett. Quick photo here. Stay where you are, folks. We're going to be meeting our fourth and final Factory World Rally Championship team in a moment. The Hyundai team uh, will be on stage. Thanks, guys. Right, everybody, welcome to the stage. If you have just arrived here at Autosport International, we are in the middle of our live World Championship Rally launch for 2018 here uh, in Birmingham. We're going to meet the fourth and final factory team now. Here's a little teaser about what we're going to be talking about. Yes, indeed. The Works Hyundai team are here in force. Please welcome, I hope, in this order, team manager Alain Panas, driver Thierry Nerville and co-driver Nicolas Gilsoul, Andreas Mickelson and Anders Jaeger, Hayden Padden and Seb Marshall, and finally Danny Sordo and Carlos Del Barrio. Welcome, guys. I think there should, there should be nine of us at the end. Indeed, there is. Shuffle along. I've never had this many people on the stage before. It's brilliant. Welcome, guys. Happy New Year to you. Thanks for being part of this WRC 2018 launch. We're going to have to share microphones. Um, Alan, let me start with you. Hyundai had the fastest car in 2017. Thierry won four rallies, but no championships. Slightly frustrating? No, I think we had a fantastic season last year. Uh, I think we proved uh, speed. I think uh, Thierry also made a big step forward. So with all these ingredients, I think uh, we should minimum do better than in 2017. So it's only a small step to where we want to be. It's a long time since we've seen such a competitive championship. Four different winners in the first four rallies, seven different winners overall, and all the big teams won a rally. It's that close, isn't it? Yeah, I think uh, this year we really had a fantastic year. I have already been a long time in the business, and uh, I have to say that this year, uh, last year at least, was a, a fantastic year for all the fans, for all the teams. We all enjoyed it, and uh, we hope to do at least the same thing uh, next year uh, with a lot of competitive drivers, a lot of uh, cars who are comparable in performance. So um, I think we go uh, ahead for a fantastic season. Um, we'll, we'll talk about 2018 again in a moment. Let's come down the line. Thierry, a, a fantastic season for you with some frustration. 
yes, it's true there was some frustration, but uh, generally I have to say uh, I was really uh, satisfied with our season with it. Uh, generally, uh, we didn't expect to be that competitive on the beginning of the season, uh, especially already on the first rounds we were quite competitive. Obviously, we missed out the good result at the end, but we are leading the two first rallies by far. And from there on as well, we won four more rallies during the season. We are, uh, yeah, best performer during the season with the most fastest time. So generally, uh, uh, we can't complain. Obviously, we missed the main goal at the end of the year, which was to be champion. Even though we were leading uh, at mid-season the championship ahead of Sebastian. So, uh, yeah, there were a great opportunity. We missed it, but uh, there's another great opportunity uh, starting in two weeks. Did you think at the beginning of the year with Sebastian moving from the, the mighty VW that that would be your best chance? No, I don't think you, you have to think in this way. I think uh, every year is a good chance for everybody because we start all with zero points at the beginning of the year. We have all the same opportunities. It's true that in the past years uh, there was a bit of a difference between uh, the cars, but this year uh, it was much more equalized, so uh, it makes it much more uh, easier as well for us to, to be constantly fighting for the win. And uh, I think it makes the championship more interesting as well. And uh, that's what this year uh, has been a great success in WRC, that uh, there was a lot of competition, I think seven different winners. And uh, yeah, uh, everybody could have won the championship. It's true that until now, it's still Sebastian the man to beat, but uh, we are getting closer and closer. <laughs> Nicola, you've worked with Thierry for a number of years. Uh, is your relationship still strong in the car? Yeah, yeah. The the relationship uh, never been stronger than now. Uh, I think it's increasing uh, even uh, year after year. So uh, yeah, I can say we are we are the maximum now. Is it frustrating when you do all that uh, preparation behind the scenes before a rally, and then there's a small problem that spoils it for you? Oh, I never think in that in that way because. Uh, the job has to be done anyway, and uh, it's part of the game. Uh, motorsport is like that. Uh, I know it in advance, and for me, it's not a problem at all. Uh, and as soon as something happens, I'm, now I'm used to switch off uh, and to reset immediately, so for me, it's fine. Uh, Andreas Mikkelsen, at least you'll be wearing one set of overalls in 2018. What, who did you drive for last year? Hyundai, Citroen, Skoda? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of different ones. Yeah. Started the year with Skoda, then switched uh, to Citroen, uh, and then uh, switched to Hyundai. So, um, yes, I'm stuck with this one now, and uh, that feels pretty good. Yeah. You made some, some comments when you first drove the i20 that it was a bit similar to the Polo, the Volkswagen, the dominant Polo. Is that, was that the case? Yeah, pretty much, uh, especially uh, coming back to gravel. Um, it was very much like feeling going back into the polo again after being in the in the C3, which was a bit more difficult to drive. I found it on gravel, on tarmac it was really really nice. But um, but yeah, I'm I feel like now we're in the best place possible to fight for the championship and um, feel more and more comfortable in the car. So I do believe that we have the the possibilities for the air and that we can we can fight at the top. Monty preparations, all good. Yeah, I think we're pretty much in, in control. Uh, we haven't met so much uh, tricky conditions yet. No ice and snow, so we're still looking for that at the moment. But uh, I'm sure by the start of Monte we will be ready for the 2018 season. Anders, is he, is he right? Are you ready? Have you done all your homework? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we've been ready since uh, Australia, really. Uh, thinking of uh, the next year and... Uh, as Andrea says, we, we think we are um, on a very good spot right now. Uh, preparation for Monte has been going very well. We're settling into the team very well uh, and the car as well. So, um, yeah, if we, if we manage to find that snow Andreas is talking about, then uh, I think we're in uh, really good shape for the first rally of the season. Uh, you and Andreas only joined forces reasonably recently. Um, how is that relationship gelling? Um, as you say, recently we started working together, but we have known each other for uh, for a long time. So um, for sure, it's uh, it's getting uh, it's getting better and better. We always try to improve and uh, how we work and uh, and develop. Uh, but uh, I would say uh, just from the start, it worked really really well, and it's uh, still are. Uh, Hayden Padden upholding uh, Kiwi honors. 
a, a frustrating season for you in many ways, but the speed is there, isn't it? Yeah, obviously, uh, last year was not the year we wanted, but uh, this year's a, a fresh start. Um, you know, seven opportunities ahead of us to, to try and get back on the podium and uh, to do what we know we can do. So, yeah, we've just got to put last year behind us and start again. It's a case of sort of resetting. Um, you're not doing the full programme, right? You're sharing the, the third car with Danny. Um, you, I guess you'd prefer a full programme, but that's something you can work to for 2019. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, this is just the way the situation is, so we have to make the most of it and use it as a bit of, uh, you know, fuel to the fire, if you like, to come back stronger. And, uh, yeah, we want to obviously get back in the seat full time. So this year we want to help the team win the manufacturers as, as primary goal, but also um, get ourselves back in a good uh, place so we can uh, fight in the future. Seb, you're fairly new to the team. You guys haven't let your heads drop, have you? No, I mean, um, obviously I've been working with Hayden for all of last year and, and in the background the year before that as well. But... Uh, as he mentioned, obviously, you know, frustrations are there, but, but of course you've got to look forward and there's no point dwelling on what, what was. You know, we've got the opportunity now to, to move forward and yeah, hopefully, like Hayden says, get some strong results for the team and for ourselves. Give us an idea of how much preparation you do behind the scenes before an event. Um, and you've, got, I mean, you've got the maps all over the kitchen table, haven't you? And you're kind of working out where you're going to go. And yeah, so obviously the, the kind of process starts maybe four months before an event when the organisers publish all their uh, the information. And even from that point, we're kind of uh, beginning to research information from, that we can use from previous years, whether that's notes from last year that we can reuse. And yeah, the, the preparation sort of builds up from there. In the final two weeks, it's, it's really full on with re rewriting notes, watching the video for, for Hayden, you know, marking up road books. It's a, it's a really kind of all-encompassing job. Danny Sorter, you've been with the team for a number of years. You are, can I call you a WRC veteran? You've been in the championship a long time, haven't you? What are your best chances for 2018? Yeah, I will try, I will try to, to do my best, like always, in, the, in this year. Of course, we will swap the car with, uh, with Hayden and uh, uh, the races I will, I will do. I will try to do my best to, to try to win some rallies and uh, to help the team to, to win the championship, the Manufacture Championship. And... Um, Working with Carlos, you are. W which events are you doing? How many are you doing this year? With, uh, in total, seven rallies we'll do. Okay, and when do you start your season? In Monte Carlo. Okay, so you and, and which ones are you going to miss? You're missing about half of them, I guess. I will you? do Monte. Ca I will do. I will miss Sweden. I will do Monte Carlo and Mexico, uh, Portugal, Argentina, uh, Germany, Spain, and uh, Corsica. Something like that. Are these the best cars you've driven in WRC? Are these the best cars you've driven in WRC? Yeah, they, I, every car has something special. Of course, last year and this year are uh, special years because the, the cars are really competitive and really nice to, to drive. And the uh, sensation into the car are really nice. So maybe last year for me was the, the best World Rally car. Carlos, how are preparations going for the season? So far, so good. Uh, Monte Carlo is very tough for a co-driver because you have a lot of paperwork uh, to sort out. But uh, for the time being, it's been okay. It's almost sorted, so we will have to pay attention to the latest bulletins and the weather forecast and things like this that in Monte Carlo comes in the, at the very end. It's such a difficult event, isn't it? You can do all the preparation and the conditions change from one corner to the next. Yeah, that's the problem. Monte Carlo is like that. That is the nature of this rally. I mean, uh, it's not about performance. It's about uh, trying to sort out all, all the stages and try not to be very mistaken. That's, that's the pace you must have in Monte Carlo to, to win the rally. I mean, I never won. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I was second and third, and we will try yeah, to win. Yeah. Okay, good luck. Uh, Alan, final question to you. Uh, outline some of the fundamental changes f on the car for this year. What have you been able to do? So uh, we introduced already some of the changes last year in uh, Catalonia. So we were a bit a step ahead of uh, the other teams. Yeah, you've run, you've run the new car, haven't you, already in, in, on events? Yeah, we have run the, the new car. And since Catalonia, we introduced already some changes uh, on the Aero de Mining car for uh, 2018. Um, so uh, we introduced some new things, we did quite good testing uh, during the winter time, so this is the main points and uh, during the year we will still introduce some jokers, so uh, we are ready to battle for the World Championship title. A possibility to run a fourth car at some, on some events, possibly Rally Deutschland, your, your local rally? 
Yeah, you know, um, as both of the drivers, they said they are going to do uh, seven rallies. I always have been quite good in mathematics, so we have to run a fourth car in minimum one rally. So this rally will be Rally Portugal, uh, where we will line up all four drivers, and I think it will be a fair battle bef between all of them. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, great to see you all. We wish you uh, a, a really great season. A uh, round of applause to our Hyundai guys, please. Alan Panas, Thierry Nerville, Nicholas Gilso. Andreas Mickelson, Anders Jaeger, Hayden Padden, Seb Marshall, Danny Sordo, and Carlos Del Barrio. Thanks, guys. All stages. All crashes. All drama. All live. Watch the FIA World Rally Championship like never before. With more than 25 hours of live coverage from every rally, including continuous live TV studio, with expert analysis and behind the scenes stories. Live from the service park. And with our interactive programme guide, you'll never miss a thing. Get all the action, all live. Anywhere, anytime.